Hi, I'm Eric with Narrow Road Van Conversions. Thanks for coming along on another walkthrough with us. This van is a low EMF build and also low VOC build. So there's some things that went into it that make it that. Why don't you come on in and have a look around. There's a few things that make this van a low EMF build and the customers hired a consultant to evaluate the electronic needs and how to properly shield the van from electromagnetic frequencies. So one of the things I can show you is in the electrical compartment, but before I jump in there, I know a lot of people always ask me about the hinging bed and here's a good look at it because it doesn't have a mattress on it. Um, this pivots up. And a leg kicks out there and comes down and supports the bed as there's one on the other side too over the plumbing area on that side. So that supports the bed for it to be in the hinging area. But the first thing you'll notice is we've got some stainless steel shielding here uh, to shield the entire electronics compartment um, on the inside walls, the back walls, um, everything is shielded. One of the other things that we did in this van was we have shielded wiring and we have shielded outlet plates. Coming in through the side door, looking back, you can see we've got a stainless steel on the wall here of the kitchen. That really doesn't have anything to do with EMF uh, because the wiring is insulated and these wall plates are insulated also. We mentioned that this is a low VOC build. So we use low VOC paints on everything. We also used Havelock wool in this build where we normally use foam for insulation. Uh, looking in to the electrical compartment from this side, you can see that stainless steel shielding that we have on all the walls. So this in here, you can see the inverter. So I'm going to go grab my EMF detector and let's have a look around on what the levels are in here. So here I have my EMF detector. And you can see we've got the E field on the top and the H field on the bottom. They're both at zero. So walking in, walking around. Right now the inverter is off. So the main key to low EMF is to not run an inverter or alternating current. If I walk up to a outlet, see this cord is plugged in. So just that cord being plugged in has some EMF in it. So that's an extension cord that's plugged into our wall here. And uh, it has some EMF running through it. So like I said, the wiring in here is shielded for EMF. And so we're walking back in here and you can see we've got zero on everything. Zero on everything. Into the electrical compartment, right by the inverter. And we got zeros. So what I'm gonna do is we have a remote switch for this inverter. I'm going to turn that on. We have all the controls in this in this switch panel here. Here's the inverter. Turn that on. Go down. We still got zeros on our EMF reader. We go up to our outlet here. You can see it's zeros. And then now when I start getting close to this inverter, you'll notice that it starts to Show some so but not much <clears throat> so um, what I did find out is that let's say we're going to charge the batteries on this 
let's see what happens when I go plug in. This is an inverter charger and it will charge the batteries also. So when I turn it on to charge the batteries, um, let's see what happens. All right, so you can see we're at zero as the inverter is on and you know, pretty much no EMFs right now. So we're gonna plug in the inverter charger and it's gonna take about 20, 30 seconds for it to kick on. It just got plugged in and it's gonna to start to charge our batteries and we'll see what happens. There we heard it kick on and it will slowly ramp up and throw some bolt, some uh, amps into our batteries. And you can see, I can hear it, hear the inverter ramp up and you can see the numbers go up on the lower portion, which is the H field is at 2.6. If you get in closer, you'll see it'll, it'll go up. So that's just a little bit about the EMF protection in here. Um, again, the key to a low EMF build would be to not run your inverter. So the more you can run off of DC, the better off you are uh, because there's no EMF associated with DC electricity. We've got a bookshelf on the head side of the bed and a bookshelf here on this side of the refrigerator cabinet. Uh, down below that we've got a spot for a CPAP machine with an AC and a DC plug in there. Nice big area in there. Moving forward we got a what looks like a wardrobe closet but it's actually a pull-out pantry. This worked out nice. We've done pull-out pantries in the past and they're uh, kind of big and heavy. And this seemed like a good solution for, rather than having a big, large pull-out pantry. Another uh, storage above the refrigerator. Got an isotherm fridge. Really big drawers below the isotherm fridge. Another one down below here, which holds their toaster oven. So no propane in this build, so everything is electric or the air heater is run off the gas in the motor. We've got some pull out drawers on this side. We have a fixed bench here that just stays there and we've got drawers above it. We can open and drawers below it. These are little shorter drawers because the wheel wells are back there. Another whole big set of drawers there. Underneath the sink, we've got a reverse osmosis water system for the drinking water with a little reverse osmosis tank here. So that filters the drinking water, which is already filtered once by a whole van filter which is that two canister back here so that filters all the water to the entire van and then the reverse osmosis is just the drinking water you can see we've got a little flip up here into the plumbing area for storage and access got another one back there for storage and access on the electrical side you can see we've got a fuse box over there We've got a Frisair air conditioner up above the bed. We've got a ceiling fan. This van has window covers by Adventure Van Company, which I like them. They are very well insulated. Um, we've got a nice big sink in here. Water goes down into gray water tanks, and our control center is up here. And you can empty the sink gray water tank by clicking this button, uh, the shower gray water tank by that button, main lights, outside power, which is a future use, um, a little electrical cord running up there for anything you may want in the future, 
the inverter, it's already on, and outside lights. Outside lights are kind of cool. Check this out, we turn those on. We go out and we've got perimeter outside lights up here on all four sides. They are motion detected also, so let's uh, sit still and let them shut off. Right, that front one shut off, the side one shut off. So let's walk around. That one saw me, that one already saw me. Walk around, this one sees me, kicks on. Back, sees me, kicks on. And then the side. So it's kind of cool, motion sensor lights. Um, Anybody's creeping around or animals, uh, it'll kind of flip on and scare them away, hopefully. Here's a look up into the back. Here's that compartment I talked about. There's some storage here. Got a little cut through to see the water tank. So if this door is not open, you can see the level of water in there. This van had an external fill. They wanted a locked external fill, so we have that on the outside. There's a little bunk sliding windows. Roof rack with four 175 watt solar panels up there, so a lot of power coming in there. Down here, this is the shore power inlet for charging. This van came with a uh, power step when you open the van door. Uh, you can see stepping up that we've got a flip up table for the passenger seat. And it's a little, it's countertop height right now. It's a little high for the seat. So we've got a adjustable height. So that will slide down for that to be lower. We've got another lagoon table there that can pivot around for the bench and go between the two front seats. The toilet's pretty cool. Here underneath you can see there's a HEPVO valve which stops any gases from coming back up because this is a hand-built urine diverting toilet. I did this in uh, my very first build and since then we've done a lot of composting toilets but Ironically, I've had a lot of requests for this lately, and I do kind of like it. You know, the urine goes in there, and then you can put a bucket with a bag below that, and put your solid waste in there, wrap it up, and uh, dispose of that properly. It's a 36 inch shower pan, coat hooks back up to the power area. This side of that, and on this side is the battery monitor. Got some remotes down there. This is the status of the batteries. Well, thank you for coming along on this walkthrough on this low EMF build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to have a custom built van built exactly to your specifications, feel free to reach out to me in the email below. I'd love to get you a custom quote for your exact needs in your van. And Eric for Nero Road Van Conversions. See you next time. Turned out nice fit, huh? Yeah. Oh, I really like how this is. That's a nice backing. Yeah. Oh, and our tabletop. You know, I thought, oh, well, this could be a place where one of the girls could camp out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this we is could. big. All the way out here. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, oh, I love the big sink. It's so nice. Oh, that was a good choice. Look at the big drain. Yeah.